Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play. My name is Vinik Fay and you are watching episode number six of our series here in the Mesa biome. As you can see, plenty of stuff has changed. There has indeed been a lot of uh, stuff that I need to show you, a lot of stuff that I need to tell you, a lot of stuff we're going to do. Uh, I'm very excited about this episode, so let's get right on in there. Ow. First things first, as you can see, I've put a roof on this place. Um, just a preliminary roof though, because this is actually going to be the second level. Um, things are going to be built a little bit higher up, but uh, we're gonna get back a little bit more into detail on that a little bit later. Um, storage system hasn't changed. Um, after last, uh, our last house, I've made some preparations to make sure that we don't have to change that every so often again, although I'm not really using it at this point. As you can see, uh, most of my stuff is still uh, stashed over here. Um, really uncharacteristic of me, but I've been really too busy and frankly too lazy to actually go on and change it. So. Um, everything is just here, uh, the basics are here in, in the right places like stone and stuff like that so it is a little bit organized but not in the, in the sense that I'm used to uh, doing it myself. So. But I'm sure we'll get that sorted out eventually. Um, the main reason I haven't done it is because, um, like I said, too lazy and another one is I wanted to do it um, similar if not identical to the last one. But I can't really remember, so I think I'd have to go and, and either go back and have a look or check one of my other episodes. I don't know. Um, but this is not really all that urgent. Um, let's, there's plenty of other stuff we need to do. As you can see, we've also been to the Nether. Um, had some uh, some good fortune there. Uh, I found my first Nether Ward. Yay! Oops. <laughs> That's a, that was an accident. So yeah, um, that means that we will be able to actually make potions this time, which is very, very nice. Although potions will not be the focus of, um, of our establishment here, but it will be useful in the future, uh, definitely. Um, unfortunately, there has been a sad announcement regarding the nether. I died. Yeah, the nether seems to be, and I guess always will be the bane of my existence. Again, um, I went out looking for a um, stronghold, uh, found one, I think about 200 blocks from where my portal came out. Um, I'll actually show you where the portal is. Um, so I went on to go um, to there and on my way down there, I found this, um, oh, rack. Um, I found this um, stream of lava, I guess I, I would call it. Um, and I wanted to redirect it so I can actually traverse the terrain and it updated and all of a sudden um, I was in lava, surrounded by it, couldn't get out of it on time. Um, eventually I managed to get out, um, but the burn damage was already taking its toll and by the time I got out I was down to four hearts and with the burn damage being so long in the nether, uh, I eventually just died. I got out of room from the actual lava flow to preserve all my stuff, um, but still, um, it is a death nonetheless. My first one uh, in this world, and I'm really very sad because I was doing really well, but oh well. As you can see, the nether portal is in a very precarious spot. Um, that layer is actually one thick. Um, the location where the zombie pigmen are now standing actually wasn't there on uh, initially when I came out this was basically the edge and the portal was right on there and I just luckily came out on the right end because if I had gone on to the other side I would have definitely fallen into what seems to be like a giant sea of lava. I don't know if, if something changed in, in lava generate in nether generation sorry because there seems to be lava all over the place it's not it's incredible really. Anyway, um, so yeah, the fortress is somewhere over there, um, like two, three hundred blocks away. Um, not gonna go into too much detail. It wasn't really a big fortress either. Um, I did find a couple chests, but not really anything fancy. Hey, guy. Can I call you James? Yeah, you're my butler now. Okay, that's James the butler. Don't have any name tags, so I can't name him. We did get a lot of stuff though. As you can see, I did find my nether chest. Uh, wore out my, my second efficiency for breaking three pickaxe, so that's unfortunate. But the new one's already ready there, um, ready to be uh, used. 
and we made very good use of it. We have 14 diamond ore blocks, 51 red store, redstone ores, a um, bunch of iron, bunch of gold, bunch of lapis, so we're very much set. Although redstone is still a little bit low. We still are gonna need a lot more for what we wanna do this uh, build. Speaking of this build, let's have a look at the book, shall we? As you remember, we named our last episode, our last outpost, the base camp, and set ourselves some uh, objectives that we needed to achieve before we can actually move on to our current location. Now we're going to do the same thing for the, our current location as well, as you might expect. And this location is going to be called the Granary. Uh, and the name uh, is actually derived from um, our objectives for this um, location. Um, I step, took a step at it a little bit earlier too. Um, this location will be uh, our trial location for uh, setting up the farms that we want to do on our eventual major project in the nearby or long distant future. Who knows uh, how long it's going to take. So that's going to be the main objective for this location. The automated food farms for wheat, um, potatoes and carrots. And since netherrack is actually one of the, it's very similar to those three, uh, we're also going to make a farm for netherrack uh, in a very similar fashion. So that's going to be the very big thing that we're going to do and that's why I actually call it the granary. Um, now that's not going to be all. We are also going to make a cactus farm, a squid farm, and a nether railway to connect this location back to the outpost. But that's going to be the last thing that we're going to be working on since that's definitely not our priority. Um, I also talked about briefly in the last episode making like is this huge um, base with legs on different um, different uh, uh, plateaus of the mesa, you know, um, overspanning this giant um, valley, if you want to call it that. Um, I still want to do that. I um, don't really have a clue on how exactly I want to achieve that, but it's definitely in the back of my mind. So um, that's part of the reason why this episode has been uh, delayed for so long. I haven't really figured out exactly on how I want to accomplish this um, together with all the farms that I want to do. Um, so yeah, that's basically the end goal that we're going towards. Um, might add a couple more things. As you remember, I also talked about um, adding in some quote unquote punishment for if I die, I have died. Um, so there will be some uh, something to that, uh, to that regards in, uh, in the LP, um, but I'm not sure if I wanna do it uh, here as well. And I'm also not really sure entirely how I wanna do it. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wait out on that uh, as well, I think. Um, next up though is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do next is, um, maybe you can tell by what I'm actually gathering here, we're going to gather some cows. Because during the last, um, our, our, during our, whoa, movement keys, come on. Got screwed up on my keyboard there. Um, during our stay at the, um, <laughs> completely lost my train of thought now. Uh, during our stay at the outposts, we had quite a bit of problems with food. Well, not really problems, but the food source wasn't really that ideal. And that's what's supposed to change here. This is the location of our new cow pen. Uh, I have already found some cows um, in my explorations. I've, did, I've done quite a bit of exploration. Um, as you can see, I've, uh, I've gathered saplings for pretty much all trees around. Only the birch saplings are a bit behind um, so I've been quite a bit uh, around here and I found a couple of cows, just four of them I think. So um, instead of slaughtering them like I did last time, I want to preserve them and bring them back to my base so I can actually um, safely breed them and uh, reuse them in the future. Unfortunately though, they are quite a ways away. There are about, if I had to guess, like 300 blocks this way, um, over there somewhere. Uh, we have to cross several plateaus of the mesa. Um, so it's going to be a pain in the ass to get them over here. I know it already, especially with four cows. If you can do one by one, then it might be feasible, but it will take significantly longer. But yeah, um, we have to do it. I mean, we have 21 books, which we recovered from a village that we found on the way over here. Uh, but 21 books is definitely not enough. We have seven bookcases now on our 
designated spot for an enchanting table. The enchanting table itself has not been set up yet, simply because I'm missing a book and some diamonds, but you know, the fortune pickaxe will take care of that, no problem. Um, ah, crap. So yeah, um, I still need, uh, by my calculations, I still need 24 um, books, so that means 24 leather as well. Um, and if I wanna do that by killing cows, I'm going to find, I don't know, somewhere between 24 and 48, I guess. Uh, given with my luck, so I think I think the easiest way all around is just to drag these animals back to my place and then try to breed them so I can actually um, farm them and for as well for both their food and their hide. So I guess that's what I'm going to do now. Um, not sure if I'm going to show this on camera. It kind of depends on how good this goes, but uh, they are somewhere around here. Here, that's number one, and the other two. Um, there's two that I captured somewhere around here. Let me see if I can find them. There's another, and then there is you right there. My blocks, cool. And there's another one down there, I think. I don't know, I'll have to look for them. Anyway, these are the four cows that I'm going to be bringing back to my base. And as soon as that's done, um, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I got them about halfway there. I, I hit them down there in uh, in that hole. Well, three of them. Uh, one of them is down there. Um, the house is right there, but it's so hard moving these guys at night. They keep warring off. It seems like three is like the perfect number to to bring them around, but four is like impossible to do. And for some reason, uh, the fourth one always gets on the loose and. and wanders off and, and for God knows where. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to do, but it's across this wide, um, this wide area with witches and creepers. So um, <laughs> moving them at night is just you know, too risky and too annoying. I think I'm just gonna go home real quick and sleep and then um, the rest of the way, um, that'll probably be the, the safest way to, to go around this because doing this at night is definitely gonna get me killed again. So yeah, fun times. So close to home, so close, and of course one of them jumps the wagon. Oh, this is so annoying. Really? Thank you, come on, let's go. All right, so last stretch. Um, during the night, um, yeah, four, okay. During the night, I took the time to actually make um, a two wide path up the mountain and that saved me a huge amount of time, I think. It still was pretty painful to get them up there, but eventually it really didn't take all that long. Um, it's just annoying to look at these guys' faces all the goddamn time. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, oh well, that's, uh, It'll be worth it when they all when they're all in here and, and I can actually use them for food and, and leather. But still, it's a, it's a pretty annoying mechanic in the game, nonetheless. All right, that is it. That is four cows making babies. Repopulation, yay! Two babies in there. I hope. Okay, now two babies in there. So that's funny, this cow thing, this baby cow thing, that cow is its mom and that cow just had a baby, that one. This just looks for the first cow that comes within sight, I think, it's really funny. Anyway, we have accomplished um, our first mission of the day. We have cows ready for repopulation. So let's move on to the next one. All right guys, so next on our list is actually doing some measurements. Um, now, as I said in the intro of this video, um, we're going to make some huge farm buildings here. Um, so our objective is actually to make them as compact as possible, as efficiently as possible, as pretty as possible, and put them in a good location. And the good location, um, I think, is going to be the roof here. So we're going to start here and continue all the way along there um, to make some nice modular farm units that we can expand upon. and build um, several of them next to each other as we wish. Um, so as for now, I foresee um, four of them. So one for wheat, one for carrots, one for potatoes, and one for 
um, network. Not necessarily in that order, but four units nonetheless need to be built. Um, now we don't currently have all the materials to start building yet, unfortunately. But what we can do is actually um, start laying out uh, where we want them. So eventually uh, we can calculate how much materials and how much space we will actually be needing for these units. Um, so first things first, um, I have build these things completely in a creative world. Um, we'll have a look at them in another video. Um, and I also took a look at the measurements that we need uh, to create them. Um, so if my calculations are correct, and you know, it's just simple math, so yeah, it's 17 wide and 12 deep for the base um, of the, um, the actual farming area. Uh, and after that, I think it's about 20 or 30 blocks um, more for all the redstone that will happen behind the scenes. Um, I'm, pur I'm purposely not going to try to fit them all inside of this building since that's definitely not possible. And um, I kind of want to break my own habit of building nice clean buildings. So I want to vary things up a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start here with my first unit. Um, so I'm going to break all that stuff down as soon as I'm done, um, that's fine. And this will be actually the first building block for our unit. So this is number one, uh, which makes this two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this is the width that we're going to need for our first unit uh, with the center being I think this block um, guesstimation no probably this one anyway this is going to be the width of our first unit okay now as I said we're going to need four units next to each other um, but let's start off with just one to see where we end up. So this is 17, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, take that, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is actually what we're going to end up with as a whole uh, per unit and then some more sum in, in that direction uh, for all the redstone contraptions. So let's fill that up real quick and then uh, we'll go on to the next step. All right guys, so this is what it looks like. This is the base of the first plat platform that we're going to build. So between these two columns is where the first uh, farm fields will be placed as soon as we have the right materials and all the building blocks required to actually build this thing up. Um, the main thing holding us back at this point is the redstone. Um, and also, um, because I want to give some color to this place, um, we want, I want to color code uh, all of the farms. So, um, for instance, I want to use red for the netherwart farm. I want to use uh, yellow for the wheat farm. I want to use orange for the uh, carrot farm. Um, and green for the potato farm. I'm still doubting between uh, green for potato or wheat. Uh, kind of depends how it goes since both of them kind of go towards yellow. Um, so that might change, but that's kind of the idea that we're going for. Um, so yellow and orange and red clay is um, available. As you can see pretty much everywhere around the mesa, there's plenty of clay available for us. Green clay, on the other hand, is not available by in, in natural form. So we're going to have to make this cactus farm first. Uh, and as soon as that's done, we're going to have to make um, some green clay so we can actually complete, complete this thing. Um, I also noticed that this is taking a lot more space than I thought. So <laughs> I think very, very near in the nearby future, we're going to have to move the cow farm. Um, <laughs> Kind of, kind of should should have thought that thing through because now it's going to be run over by uh, our farm buildings pretty much, and and I really don't want to have to listen to all these cows every every time I come here, come up here to to host, um, not to host, to harvest my uh, my crops. So um, that's something else that we're going to have to uh, work out in the nearby future, um, but that's for another time. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to complete um, sketching up the measurements for the rest of these um, components. So it's uh, three more. 
um, that we're going to have to do. And as soon as that's done, um, I think we'll move on to something else because we definitely don't have enough blocks to actually finish what we're trying to do here. So um, talk to you when, uh, when I get that done. Okay, so as you can see, I well underestimated the size of this thing. Um, I didn't even have enough blocks to finish all of it. I just uh, got around to doing like the, the basic shape of the platform that we will be standing on, let alone uh, the actual platforms that we, we will be building these things on. Um, so yeah, um, cow farm also definitely will have to move. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is actually move this um, to another one of the plateaus that we can find here in the Mesa. Um, and I think uh, what I'm going to do is actually build the spider web, well, spider leg thingy um, that goes across here as um, a sort of bridge between the different plateaus. So um, basically, I will be able to traverse to my cow form that will be, uh, for, exa for example, say there on that cliff. Um, and I will be able to actually go to the middle, um, to this uh, intersection, if you will, and then go on to the next plateau from there. Um, to have like a, a safe method of travel between the different components of my base and then all the other things that I had uh, on my list such as the uh, cactus farm and the um, squid farm that will be on a different plateau as well um, so I can actually easily traverse between the various components of my base. I think that's um, that's pretty much what we're going to uh, try to accomplish here so um, yeah, I'm really excited about this um, I'm getting a good feeling about uh, uh, the direction that we're going in. All right, guys, this is going to be the last part of our episode. We're running out of time. Not really, but uh, I am running out of blocks, though. So um, I can still do a couple things, but, you know, I, I would rather do uh, a substantial amount rather than doing uh, a couple other small things that ultimately will amount to nothing. So final thing we will do for this episode is do some fortuning. As you can see, this is my Fortune 3 uh, iron pickaxe that we also used during the last... Um, the last episode that we were in the outposts, we're going to fortune these 14 blocks of diamond ore, uh, see how much we get, and then use um, some of the experience from it to repair uh, one of the pickaxes I have been using so far. I desperate, desperately need some new gear to actually get going and make some actual progress because these iron pickaxes will just not do. So 14 ores that mounts in uh, third in 35 um, 35 diamond ores or diamonds I should say and that's also almost a three to one ratio which is excellent I am very very pleased with this so that's another three almost four diamond blocks ready to store I'm actually going to save these in here for now just to, to highlight um, what I got in this uh, in this area um, to keep it separate from the others Last thing that we're going to do is repair and rename this bad boy right here. This is one of the Fortune 3, uh, sorry, I'm breaking three efficiency four pickaxes. We're going to rename this um, grinder. Um, I think that's very appropriate. Uh, enchantment cost one, which is incredibly low. I can't get over the fact that they've made this so low. I think it's really sad uh, that they did that. Um, but hey, um, and then finally, we're going to repair it. Enchantment cost is three like that and 11. I never really understood what the benefit was of doing it one way or the other. Um, so if anyone could explain that to me, that would be amazing. But for now, I'm just going to do it like this, which is cheaper and also keeps the name. Um, so here we are, grinder uh, repaired in full efficiency for unbreaking three pickaxe. So uh, what are we going to do um, for next time? Um, well, for next time, um, I need blocks. I need lots of blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start digging um, my squid farm, I think, which is basically a giant hole back in, in the, the ground, which is going to give me both a lot of clay blocks because I'm going to start it, I think, over there or over there. Anyway, on top of one of the mesa plateaus, anyway. Um, so it's going to give me a lot of clay blocks and um, the, the deeper I go, it's also going to give me a lot of stone blocks, which both of which are needed to actually complete this bad boy right here. And hopefully um, last, next episode will be the last one before we can actually make some substantial progress uh, on the farm building because I'm really, really excited to get that going. All right. So um, that was it for today as the sun rises up. 
over there. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you all again in the next episode.